like a 10 minute executive session for the council. So I guess council and mayor. So this is the, uh, as you said, this is the bids that were received on the rise and issue of upgrades over the power plant. It's a federally mandated EPA regulation. Um, it has to be in compliance. Uh, the actual date was May 13th of this year was the compliance date. Uh, the city received an extension letter uh, through December of this year. Um, we'll have to file a second extension letter uh, due to the delivery of the the items, the materials on this thing. Uh, I really don't anticipate that being a huge problem uh, once we have a contract in place with a contractor with a firm date on it. So I, I don't anticipate that being a problem. If we don't have the uh, engines in compliance by the end of the year, then they can only be used for emergency only purposes. So if power goes out, we can still fire up the generators and run them. But if you get a call from Midwest to operate them, then you're out of compliance with the regulations as of the end of the year if we don't get the extension letters. <clears throat> but there again, assuming the government will be up and operating by then and we get everything done, then uh, getting an extension letter I don't think is going to be an issue, but I won't speak for the EPA. Uh, we sent out bids to uh, four different vendors, uh, two of which had received that had sent bids previously to the city. Uh, they chose not to bid this time, uh, oddly enough, but we did receive two bids, uh, one from Fairview Mechanical and, and one from uh, Fairbanks Morse. Uh, there's a pretty wide disparate uh, amount, like 234 and 334. However, that's not that unusual with the bids I've been seeing in other places. And so there's a pretty wide variety of, of range out there, depending on who's busy and which technologies they're using. So. That doesn't trouble me too much, and it's also in line with what I've seen in other communities. Uh, it's very similar to the bids we received for uh, uh, some of the similar work over in Lard, some of the similar work that was done in Burlingame. They were order of magnitude very close to what we've received other places, so I think they're both responsive bids. Uh, we went through all the details and what they submitted, 
all of them appear to meet the criteria that we put out in the bid documents. So uh, I consider both of those responsive bids and, and reliable bids. The uh, all things being equal, I don't see any reason not to accept the low bid in this case. There, there is one item that I want to talk about, the option one, what that need up is. One of the vendors who since didn't submit a bid had came up with an option to not replace the outside silencer unit. They were only going to put an inline catalyst in there and it would be located inside the power plant. The problem is the ones that were submitted with this bid really don't fit in the power plant. It would require some modification to the stairway. Uh, there, we'd have to add some additional heat shielding that's not included in this bid. Uh, and it would frankly be a real pain to actually change the catalyst units. They're like a 60 pound air conditioner filter that you'd have to lift out and change their by metal. It's, the crane doesn't quite go all the way over to where the catalyst would have to be located. So it's just going to be an ongoing nightmare to try to put that. And I don't think that option one is a good option for, for the way this power plant's laid out. Uh, I suggest we replace the outside units, put the catalyst in there, all three would be very similar. Be very similar with what a lot of other communities are doing out there. So, uh, I mean, we want to save every dime you want to, but in this case, I think it's just going to be ongoing maintenance issues. Uh, try to go with that option one. So for that reason, my recommendation is to accept the bid for the 234, 224, 735 from Fairview Mechanical. Is there any questions or comments? Where are they located? Uh, Hickman, Nebraska. Can you explain the, uh, um, the option one deduction underneath uh, this right here to me? This right here, I'm not quite following this. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, the, the inline catalyst. Oh, okay, okay. So, by not replacing the outside unit and just putting the catalyst in line, then you wouldn't have had to replace the outside muffler, and so it was a little less money. But, for the maintenance purposes right. ongoing, you're, you're really not, Okay. it's probably not a good idea. That's right. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Timing-wise, uh, the work uh, according to the contract, would be substantially complete by April 1st next year with uh, final completion by uh, no later than May 1st is what is in the contract terms. Uh, they talked with the vendor that supplies the silencer units. They expect, based on their current delivery time, that they should be able to deliver materials sometime in January. And so uh, if everything works out, we could actually have everything done in the, in the February time frame, perhaps. It, probably take about a week and a half or two weeks to actually install the units. There's not a whole lot of installation. Pretty much a bolt-on unit. Replace what's there. So. What kind of maintenance is going to be required to do to that catalyst after you get installed? So a lot of it depends on how, how much you operate it. They are removable and you can wash them off and clean them off to a certain extent. Uh, you can also send them back into the manufacturer and they'll do a chemical clean on them. Uh, some people keep spares on hand. Uh, for the amount of times you operate it, I don't think that would be a worthwhile investment. They're probably anywhere from three to six thousand dollars a canister, and uh, there's really no reason to keep one around. What kind of chemicals have you got in it? It's uh, it's actually a combination of metals, rare metals, just kind of like the catalytic converter that's in your car, but different. So there's platinum, and there's all kinds of things based on the chemical composition of that engine. So it's kind of tailored to the engine exhaust. So the, reduce all the NOx in there. Okay, is this part of phase four emissions? Uh, no, that's a little differently. This is actually part of the, uh, the phase four actually has several other uh, NOx limitations and other things. This is kind of a whole separate issue that the EPA had trying to reduce the particulate matter and, and uh, that's, let's see, it was put in place about two or three years ago and then uh, but this catalytic system reduces those, those particulates. It's a little different than the emissions on the phase one through phase four of the stationary engines, but so that had to do with more things. So where I'm headed here, what's coming down the pike a year or two from now that's gonna come back and bite us right square? Yeah, it could, and 
because nobody really knows, right? So the advantage of one of these type of systems is they are modular cartridges, and so there's, I think there's three slots in the in the unit they are are bidding here. You can change those catalyst elements out to different compositions to trap different kind of particulates and different kinds of emissions. So you don't have to throw the whole thing away. You just got to change the catalyst combination. So what you're saying is down the road here a year or two, if they decide they want to do something else, we can we can put a a filter in to take care of that problem. Assuming it's a, a reasonable request, yeah. I mean, that's that's how the manufacturer are going based on what they anticipate the changes are going to be. Right. You know, will it future-proof everything? Probably yeah. not, but from what most of the responsible vendors, that's how they're building them now because they are changing regulations all the time and it's, yeah, nobody wants to spend $200,000 and then come back two years later and have the regs change and spend another $200,000. Exactly. But yeah, you Thank should you. just be able to replace the catalyst units and, and it should uh, respond to any reasonable requests the EP may come up with. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. I'm, I'm not even going to try because I'll bet you. Negative. Negative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the, ne the next steps are, um, I've got the contract documents here already uh, that can be, be signed and sent to the contractor. Then they have 10 days to send their insurance papers and all that kind of filings back. Um, and then it's just a matter of uh, getting the things on order. So we'll have, uh, in addition to the, the contract documents route, uh, we'll stay on through the end of the project and make sure all the paperwork gets filed with the EPA and everything passes the regulations and they don't put too much back pressure on the engine so we'll witness test all that too along with uh, Mel and anybody else at points. So we stay on throughout the project to the end to make sure it meets all the specifications. So. How much back pressure are they going to put on the mold motor? So they're supposed to keep it to no more than additional two inches of water anywhere on the on the exhaust. That's in the contract documents. And what they've been showing so far, they've been able to meet that in other locations. Uh, so I, I don't anticipate any problems, but that has been a problem with other communities and some of the, the early ones that were put in, putting too much back pressure and losing output on the engines. Yeah, they will load, load them up. Oh, we did a lot of testing early. Yeah, yeah. So we've got exactly. So we have a baseline right. before they ever start. Exactly. Okay. That's where some of the communities kind of got into trouble. That some of the vendors said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Yeah, it's much easier if you have the documents say, no, here's what it was before. You can't make it any worse than it was before. Right. Okay. But Because, yeah, that's that was an issue in a couple communities <laughs> that early on. So. But the system they're putting in, in now, I like to say, uh, Farabee has put in several of these units around. Uh, I don't anticipate any problems, but, you know, that's why you put it in the contract document, so you right. don't have those situations. So. There's no way they're going to reverse this deal, is there? <laughs> you know, it's one time we tried. tried. Yeah, yeah they, they uh, I'll tell you, it's for no more hours than we actually run right. it. I mean, there's not a chance they're going to come out in six months and go. I, I don't think so. If you run so many hours, you don't have to worry about it or whatever. See, the the only thing that they, they ever waffled on a lot at all was allowing you a certain number of hours per year you could operate up to 50 hours a year, which probably would sometimes get you by, but if you ever went over to that 51, then you no longer fit under that exemption and you had to immediately become compliant or shut your engines off. And so it's like... Yeah, we'll give you a little bit of leeway, but if you step over that line, you're done. <laughs> most of the time we would probably be under that, but, you know, look, I don't know of any cities that are, you may not be doing all the engines, but they're pretty, pretty much are doing their, their main engines on planes, yeah. like the, the bigger planes, and they're doing all of them. Uh, especially those that, that have part, have that in as part of their uh, contract requirements to have generation there, because... Uh, you know, you can get around it by saying these are emergency only units and we can only use them in a power out situation. Then you can run them as much as you want if the power's out in an emergency. 
but then you have to have purchase power contracts, <coughs> and have payments, and those can chew up two hundred thousand dollars pretty quick over a number of years. So. What's the estimation of the life on this? Uh, so most of the silencer units themselves are, you know, twenty plus years minimum. Uh, you know, the the silencer really is a pretty standard silencer. There's some out there if you're not using it. May last 40 years, you know. There, there's really not a whole lot of things. The catalyst units, they suggest that they don't have. They have a, like an hour lifetime. So, you know, if you have three or four thousand operating hours on it, you'll probably need to replace it because there's probably enough of the metals that have worn off by then. You'll have to replace the units. That's probably not going to happen for a good number of years. If you keep them cleaned, um, and, and by clean, probably not until you reach. Three or four hundred hours, operating hours. Will you even want to consider pulling them out and clean them? And even then, uh, the, there's monitors that go in that measure the back pressure before and after the, the units. And so, in real time, you'll know if they start not operating properly. And so, if you start getting performance degradation, you can pull them out, and clean them. If that doesn't solve it, then you just send them in for remanufacturing and then stick the new units in. So. What's that generally cost? I don't know that I have an answer for that on what the what the cleaning is. I, I wouldn't expect it to be a substantial because it, they're not really replacing anything. They just go through kind of the chemical bath deal. So. Sure. Great. Do we need to talk about the financing documents in connection with this or? Um. We can, or I think we could probably um, make the motion to accept the bid, and then we can make the motion on the financing. It doesn't matter. Or you can do it all at once. We can do it either way. Um, one thing that with the financing, you know, until um, it gets closer, you know, we can't really do a um, <coughs> application yet. I don't think. Okay. But we can't we can't afford to do this without the financing. Right, we have um, a hundred and ten thousand encumbered. Okay. So, um, do you want to check the contract at what? Minute? Yeah. So I put those in there. Okay. And, and so uh, basically, you'll have a hundred thousand due upon uh, delivery of the materials, which should be sometime in January. Uh, another hundred thousand due uh, at substantial completion, and then the balance due after all the testing and. All the paperwork's done, and everybody signed off on everything for the retaining. Do we have um, on the two options? Do we have the one to go? Do we have budgeted, or can we budget to do the shorter amount of years? You know, I think um, we may even be able to encumber that one this year. Or we, it, if it's not in the budget, because we didn't have any idea of what we were going to have as a payment earlier on, um, I think we budgeted some. Um, but we can always amend the budget. Our cash at this point is good, so amending the budget is not a problem. You know, that all might take place anyway, depending on how. So for the purpose of right now, we can easily go with the, the cheaper option. Yeah, the five-year? Yes. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that we can easily cover that. I just had him give you two different options just for you to that's get fine. the difference. That's, and that's fine. But I mean, according to what you're saying, we may be able to go even less than five. <coughs> if we have extra money and you want to pay off early, I think that's fine. But I wouldn't make your lease any less. So that if we have other things come up, you don't have all, you don't have to pay more. Right, right, okay. right. Yeah. Yes, I understand that. But. I guess I'll make a motion to accept the, the bid of uh, Fairview Mechanical in amount of 224 735 and do the five year lease option on it. Is 
Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the bid from Farabay, Farabay Mechanical in the amount of 224.735 for the catalytic converters on the power plant engines, um, financing through First Bank of Sterling uh, with the lease option to cover five years. Are there any further comments or questions? There's no other way around it. Haven't been able to find one yet. It's based on how they don't have well, I mean, to it right now. We're in the last inning, two uh, out. I mean, uh, yeah, you're really I mean, six we ain't got behind, a choice. So. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, the third out may have already occurred. We don't know it. Yeah. <laughs> so. All in favor, right hand. And if you guys have any other further questions, just route them through Mel and I'll get you the answers. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> the next item I had was truck repair uh, on our uh, GMC top kicker flatbed. Uh, we had to do a <coughs> repair on our uh, parking brake. Uh, the, the bill went through this over my spending limit uh, by $102.02. .02. Uh, the module was bad, the sensor was bad, and the pump, I know Bob, you kind of questioned me on a pump here a while back that went through, I told you it was, it was for this truck. We bought a rebuilt one, the rebuilt one went bad, we're going to get a refund on that, and we decided to just go ahead and put a, a new new pump on it uh, to, to get it get it going. So. Uh, we're going to get a credit on, on the rebuild. So, how much will the credit be? The, for the, what we paid. We, you don't remember what that is? 200 and, or 300 and some dollars, I think. Yeah, about how price of the new one, I think it was like 300 and some dollars. Where did you get the rebuild? It was down at Southwest Truck. Yeah. What was the total deal? The whole, the whole repair with labor and everything was uh, $2,102.02. And where was it done at? Dunes. We tried to fix it ourselves, and we had all kinds of codes showing up. We even called people up with the codes that were showing up, and they said it wasn't, didn't make sense. But come to find out, is that the module was was bad in there, and corroded, and uh, so that's what was going on in there. So we did the best we could on it. But <coughs> had, to, had to seek outside help. So just wanted to let you know. So. Yes. Auditors will look for Okay, I need a motion to approve the truck repair of the flatbed truck, truck in so the amount of $2,102.02. .02. Moved. Second. All in favor, right hand. Opposed. Motion carries 5 0. Alright, that's all I have. Um, had a citizen come to me today. Yeah, well, we flushed higher fire hydrants, and when we do that, that uh, so. okay. yeah. we, we put a notice in the paper telling everyone that's going to happen. And some some lines are worse than others, and that's why we do that. We do get some sediment in in the water, and okay. so when we flush them out, that's that's what happens. So we run them until they we take samples as we flush the hydrants. Some take longer than others, and when it clears up, you know, we do it in line. We'll do a whole full line of them, you know, in, in sequence and, and clear it out. So that, that's not, honestly not unusual. So. Okay. How long should that continue? It, it should clear up. I mean, that's that's what our notice in the paper and everything says. You know, if it doesn't clear up, I mean, we, if we do like a, a whole row of hydrants down a, a particular block, it could, it could last for an hour or so until we get that whole line of them done. But after that, you know, it should, should clear up. I mean, if they're seeing it, for you know, two or three hours at a time, that that would be you know unusual. They need to call us and come back. Sometimes when you flush out a, a line, we try and do it so we, we we get the whole line done. But you may be pulling water from another line a, a block away, and you may disturb that. So until we get back around to do that, then you'll see that. So. Chief Sanders. The only thing, a couple things I have is we are in the process of writing policies for the fire department and hopefully those, you guys will get a draft of those next meeting. 
and um, our soup supper is the second of November. And that's all I have. I just wanted to take a minute and thank the fire department and all the volunteers who came out and did the school's fire safety week unit. The kids really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. I actually got to go watch for the first time this year, so um, we appreciate it. Is there anything else for the chief? Motion for a 10 minute executive session to include council and mayor for the purpose of non elected personnel. Sure. Okay. And I'm discussing. Um, is that sufficient, Jim? Um, you need your. What is it? That's the. Subject. subject, you need justification, yeah. That's the justification, you need the subject. subject. What are you going to talk about? Um, hiring and firing. No, Personnel. Certainly just policy, I guess. I don't know how policy works. Yeah, I don't know how to so policy. particularly to phase it. Policy. Sure so moved. Okay. Take it. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. To order. Sergeant Green. Okay. Um, Fourth Police Officer, are we going to start that discussion up here? That's the next item on the agenda. I know I missed the last meeting. It's my understanding that someone asked for more the report that was done. I would prefer we go to number two first. All right. We have a letter from Adam, don't we? Before they were down to three, when there was a certain amount of standby hours, that's how they got paid was by however many there were that they actually worked. It wasn't just a add-on, a standard add-on. You know, if it was on the timesheet, Vicki or the treasurer payroll person would be uh, calculating what their pay would be 
depending on the hours that they actually did. And this is. Well, his, his other deal would be okay. that you could reinstate the pay when manpower is at three until the vacancy is filled. And that's basically what this, this right. does here. It, um, if the department is at three officers, or four, at four officers, and the department goes to three officers for some reason, um, and they work 9 to 28 on call hours, it would be $40 per week. If it goes above the 28, then it would go to $80 a week. That's the way it used to be. So, I think that's pretty similar to the way. I think he just worded it a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, it's. He didn't put anything in there about the hours on how that would be done. Okay. He was just throwing some other options in there other than just eliminating. That's what it was. That's fine. Okay. Anybody else want to see that? Any other Okay, so does anybody else have any opinions towards how they want to handle this? Do you want to see if if we hire a fourth officer that standby pay be eliminated? Do we want to look at if the fourth officer is hired, standby pay is eliminated, eliminated except in cases where the department drops below the four officer staffing level? And then at that point, how do we, what do we pay? What rate are we looking at paying? Are we looking at an hourly rate? Are we looking at a shift rate? Are we looking at a weekly rate? I think option B would be the one that I would go with, and we'd have to look at the, uh, the rate as needed for that, with, and we'd have to discuss that. So. Okay. So... Sergeant Rudy, currently you guys are working 12-hour shifts, mm -hmm. and you're basically getting, it's, let me see, you're working 12-hour shifts, and you're getting $40 a week standby pay, $80 a week standby pay. It's $40, isn't it? $80, $80 for, the two, for the bi-weekly. Okay, so, and how many 12-hour shifts are you working a week? Every day that we work. He goes through that. It, it amounts to about uh, a little over $2,000 an officer per year. Yeah. Okay. And it's like $2,080 for all Yeah, I got that part. I'm more looking, trying to look at it from the standpoint of if we were going to do a little with it, how we come up with an amount for when it occurs when the department drops the local officers. Could you simply use the standards that they had before? Where if they had yeah, this that's an option. That is an option, and also council is willing to do that. Um, 
the other option is to develop a additional rate per hour that's paid for standby. Well, with four officers, there shouldn't, there would be no net all, correct? Not Pardon me. Not I didn't catch that, Troy. I said with four officers, you wouldn't have any on standby time. Would yes, you? there would be days you would still have standby because you have officers with days off, um, training. They're still going to. I've worked for eight years. I've worked what, here. There's always been times that I've been on standby. What, what would the average hours be then? of on standby time or whatever you want to call it if you had four officers per officer well, i'd have to figure that out okay you guys get what two weeks of vacation a year mm -hmm. it increases by the the <coughs> years that's the only long duty <coughs> right plan there is so that the longer they're here the more vacation so what, five years it goes to three weeks um no it starts with 12 days a day a month and then Two hours every five years. Two hours in peace. Plus holidays. Plus holidays. Forty plus hours training. for training. So you're looking at what? About a month off a year for each officer? Roughly? Roughly. Between vacation and training? Roughly, yes. Okay. So four officers, that's four months where we would have standby. So that would be, and only two of the officers would be receiving the standby because the chief doesn't, and the chief doesn't receive it and the third one would either be training or on vacation so they wouldn't be receiving the standby. Right. So at $160 a month, that's three hundred and twenty dollars a month times four. So you'd be looking at basically my, my twelve, twelve, something, thirteen twenty. Thirteen eighty. Okay. Anyway, about fourteen hundred dollars a year for standby pay. In that circumstance. Is that something council can live with? Is that the direction we want to go? Well, if that if them hours, have to, them hours would have to be met before that would occur under the old stipulations. Right. Under the old stipulations, the first eight first eight hours on standby. Where is that? When there's four officers, the first it has to be over eight hours of standby before they're paid that forty dollars. When the change was made, why was it made? Because they were on three officers okay. and That's what I thought you were Sunny went into I think executive session and then we were told later this is how it was going to be. Okay. So I don't know what the conversation was. Okay. But it, it was because we had gone down to a three man department. I believe so. Did you, is that how you recall? Yeah, I believe so, John. I screamed board so I don't know. It's been I'm not entirely yeah, it been. sure. Somebody's got to speak up and tell me how where we're headed here. I can toss ideas out all night long. It's not uh, easy any way you do it. No, it's not. A salary, this is your job and this is how much you get paid. Sounds easy to me. Yeah, but standby pay is not unusual for city government. And, and not just for police officers. I mean, the last city I worked for, we had people, we had water and sewer people that were on call, and they got paid standby shifts. You know, I think it was like eight bucks a standby shift, and then they got paid for the hours they were out working, if they got called. So, but standby is not unusual. You can't expect somebody to sit at home and wait for the phone or anything without providing some type of comp compensation for it. Because basically they have to put their life on hold <coughs> even though they're not out physically doing or actively doing something. So, again, I'm, I'm looking for direction from you guys as to how we can handle this. Okay.
Should we just table it? No. I don't want to table this number. No, I don't think that's a good decision. No. This needs to be dealt with. John, this is what we currently have. No. No. Can we can we adopt we adopt this or a version of this? You, I would like to see us do that. You could approve the policy changes that you already have talked about and include the reinstating the old standby amounts. I mean, I don't know how you want to say that, but at this point, this is um, other than the change that was made when Sunny was here, this is still what the policy is because you haven't made a motion to adopt the new policy. Well, in that case, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the new policy with the changes of adding the uh, stipulation of the... Uh, with the remain remaining witnesses. State section 50.9 right. of the um, police operations code. But, okay, here's my question. The only thing I was asking is if that estimated time is right. I mean, that 0 to 8 hours, 9 to 28, and that 29 plus, you know what I'm saying? Well, you can change it whenever you want to. <coughs> well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, he's asking how many standby hours. That's what I'm saying. It is a... Okay, let me, let me try this. Okay. Okay, starting early. Yeah. In a one-month period, how many days do you work if all three of you are here and not gone? Five each. Um, so, and there'll be one day where there's an overlap, so one officer won't have call be from, let's just say, 8 to 4, that officer won't have, uh, standby, standby time, he'll work a straight 8. Okay, is that a week? That, is that if everybody's here and nobody's gone, then that would be once a week, every week. Okay, so then you would have... <laughs> The chief doesn't get it. So you have it's twenty hours of one call time per person per week. Is that correct? Um yeah, it is. It is. So if we have a four, so if we have a four-man department, we're looking at four months a year. Well, we'll be looking at on-call pay, roughly, and that's barring any major illness, whatever. So over that four months, we're looking at forty hours a week in standby pay, twenty per officer. So that's eighty dollars based on the. You're talking sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. If we go back to. Doesn't that show the first eight hours zero to eight? They they. They don't get nothing. They don't get anything. They have to have nine. So you would wipe off. Yes. You would wipe off twenty four hours off that, off that forty. Then is what you're telling me. That's what it looks like to me. Because you, each be officer would have eight hours. Right. Well, what I'm saying is... Eight hours less than what we were saying. Right, out of 40, so you're down to 16 hours that we'd actually be paying on call time. Which does, I mean, 16 or 20, it doesn't matter. You're still going to be paying 40 bucks for that standby time because of the way this is written. 
If right. they only put in eight hours in a week of standby, they're not going to get paid for it. If they put in nine, they get 40. Right. If they put in nine, they get 40. If they put in 28, they get 40. And then if they put in 29, it goes to the 80. Is that the way Mark's motion reads? Yes. Mm -hmm. Second. Is there any further discussion? Is this on a three-man department or four man department? This, this is be on a four-man four 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 department. Four man for go to a four-man department. Yeah. And if we make this, if we make this motion, is that the caveat? I mean, because let's change policy, and we still have a three-man department. So if we change this policy... The way that policy reads, though, is if you don't change it, it stays the way it is right now. Right. If it stays free the, the way that reads. This is only if you go to a four-man policy. Do we need to wait till the fourth man's hired? No. No, you, you can, can go ahead and adopt this policy. And it just states that if we do go to four-man, this is be the new on-call procedure. If we stay at three, it stays it is as it is today, the way I think it's supposed to read. That's basically what I was trying to get to. Okay, there's been a second, a motion and a second. All in favor, right hand. All opposed. Motion carries 3 2. All right, fourth officer. We beat this to death, folks. Are there any questions, comments, concerns that we need to address? Anything that anyone would like to say? I think that Chief Sailor's uh, letter right here, one of the things that sticks out to me is uh, when he says, we are not requesting a fourth officer solely to make scheduling easier, but primarily as a health and officer safety issue, which I agree with. If we maintain our current status, it is not a matter of if, but when an officer suffers an injury or possible emotional problems. We cannot afford to be down another officer, leaving two to carry the burden 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It will not only be the officers and their families that suffer, but the community we serve as well. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. I do not think we need to drag this out anymore, and I think we need to hire another officer. Let's just pick it up and set it down. even look at Joe's uh, recommendation right here, number one is plain and clear. Four person police department is best for the citizens of St. John and the police department. I mean, our job here is to do what's right for the community and it says it right there in English. That's what we need to do.
I think the citizens of this community deserve a right to you know, have a right to know. I think that we spent so much money on so many other things that they just spend the bucks got to stop somewhere. So it has to stop on the police department? It's got to stop somewhere. I disagree. I just wholeheartedly disagree. I, I, we're looking at trouble if we don't get a fourth officer. This is not how we take care of our employees. This is not how we act responsibly to our community. I'm sorry, that's the way I feel about it. What was your excuse, Terry? Did it catch all that over there? I said if you would like to interview a council member on this matter. No, I'm just trying to catch what they're saying here at the meeting, but okay. if they don't talk louder, I can't hear them, and I don't think your mics are on, which means the TV probably can hear them either. All right. All right. Um, Sergeant Rudy, do you have a report of any kind? Uh, a patrol car died today. Um, wouldn't start back up. It just quit. Battery light did come on. Uh, I took the Fishers, um, and Larry's going to look at it. He didn't have time today because he was doing the shop. So Troy will be back tomorrow to also look at it. I, so I can't tell you right now what's the matter with it. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Um, Situations. So I, I don't know how to. It's 
somebody with the school wanting to do it? Yeah, city freezing feet teacher. You should have a letter in your packet. Uh, that's what I thought, yeah. but I don't find it. I, I don't have a problem here. So, I mean, it, to me, it's like you said, it's on the school property. It's, I would consider it school responsibility unless there's something I'm missing. You're just changing the, you're going against the Uniform Public Defense Code, which you already adopted. So. That's why I said we have to change anything or what? Can I, we get a variance think, on this? I think maybe you need to talk to Rod on that because that is that is legal and I'm not the person to have narrow started. Today was the first day. And, in, and it might need to talk to Cindy and Cheddar down as well. I prefer not to have to do that, but if that's what I need to do, that's what I'll do. I don't, I don't feel qualified to, to say one way or another what we need to do to not with that. So, I mean, that's well, I would make table. a motion to let her do it because she's doing it unless you talk, if you would call Rod and make I sure there's not an issue that, that we're going to get in trouble because somewhere what, else. what Jonna was referring to is I had sent her a request to change the ordinance to allow school sponsored or school structured PE courses to be um, exempt. And that's when Rod had her get the insurance company and everything involved. I think that if, and I'll, and I'll double check this with Rod, but I think that if they bring it to council for approval every time, they're going to do it, and council approves it, I think that that alleviates the city from any responsibility and understanding. And I can talk to Mr. Meyer and see if he is willing to provide the city with a letter stating that you know, we accept or they accept liability for it. So there's been a motion to allow it. Second. For the comments and discussion. I'll what is that? Have you got a copy of that uniform code? I I don't. What part of it does it allow that? Ten point six. Thank you. Sorry. What? Code was 10.6. Oh, 10.26. 10.26. 10.26. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. 26 didn't look. It's right over here. Lists everything. <coughs> Baby gun, air gun, belt gun, archery. specific areas of concern, I would appreciate it if you're willing to do this. If any of you have specific areas that you'd like to talk about, specific things, be it a department, be it benefits, whatever, let me know so I can get some numbers pulled together from staff so that we have the tools that we need to sit down and have a 
good conversation about what things are costing us and where we need to look at what we need to do. So um, I guess the first thing I, I need to know is if you are willing to give up a Saturday. Yes, yeah. I appreciate that a great deal. Um, I'd like to do it in the community room of the basement of the library um, for two reasons. One, it'll give us access to Wi-Fi and projector stuff so that if we need to do some PowerPoint kind of stuff, we'll be able to do that. Um, the other is that if there are community members who are interested in attending and listening, there's plenty of room down there for them to be able to do that. Um, and it'll be more comfortable for council also. So, I guess what I need from you guys is by the next meeting, to look at your calendars and see if, like, I'm thinking either like the second Saturday in December or, and I don't have a calendar, <coughs> or the third or the third, second or third Saturday in November. I'm trying to stay away from Thanksgiving weekend. So, and. Second weekend in November. That's the kind of stuff I need to know. So I, mean, um, the, the, I guess the third week in November or whatever in December, I guess would be fun to meet so far. December. The November. third weekend in November or the she said the first or second weekend in December. Well, we'll be out of town on the fourteenth of December. You will be yeah. okay. okay, so now we're down to the seventh or the third weekend in November. Realistically, if we had to, we could push it into the first of the year, but I'd really rather do it before we start the next budget year if we can at all. I'm also out of town on the 23rd of November. So we're now down to December 7th. Yeah. We do it in the morning or the afternoon? Uh, whatever works best for you guys. I have no problem with the morning, and I have no problem with the afternoon. It's entirely up to you. I would say Makes no difference to me. Okay, so. So we're going to do it. December 7th. December 7th at 8 a.m. That's my plan from 8 today, or then if we need to, we might go to 1. I will get the staff. If you guys will get with me. Um, does everybody have my phone number? Okay. Call me. You can email me. Um, whatever works, and let me know if you guys have um, things that you, in particular that you want me to be pulling numbers on so that we can talk about it. All right. Old business, skating room manager applications. Session. I mean that order. 
I am looking for a motion to approve uh, appointing Vicki Lewis as the scheme manager. So moved. Is that more? Yes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, right hand. Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Is there any other business? Uh, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Sure, you know.